Welcome to the CSS Flexbox Crash Course, where we'll teach you how to make your web pages more flexible than a yoga instructor on a trampoline. You might think that CSS stands for Can't Solve Squat, but with Flexbox, you'll be able to solve all your layout problems faster than you can say box sizing border box. Get ready to flex those CSS muscles and make your website look as awesome as a unicorn riding a skateboard. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications bell on so that you never miss any of our future videos. We'll teach you everything from basic HTML to advanced JavaScript and everything in between. And if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to drop them in the comments below. We love to hear from our viewers, especially if you're a unicorn riding a skateboard. So let's get started with Flexbox Crash Course and unleash the power of flexible layouts. Remember, with great flex comes great responsibilities and great design. Let's go. Flexbox works by dividing a container which could be a div, span, literally anything into flexible items that can be arranged along two axes. Now these axes are main axis and a cross axis. Now the main axis is defined by a flex property known as flex direction which later in this video we're going to be diving into deep. And this sets the main axis to be either horizontal or vertical. Now, we have another axis that is a cross axis which runs always perpendicular to our main axis. So if the main axis is horizontal, then the cross axis would obviously be vertical and vice versa. So these two axes are imaginary and do not actually interfere with your design. Now in this image, you can see that we have a box which has this blue line and also this red line. Now this red line is the main axis and then this blue one is our cross axis. Fill this box with five boxes. Let's color these boxes yellow so that we can clearly see what is going on. Now by default, as you can see, these boxes are stacked upon each other. Now the reason for that is that we know that these boxes are block elements since I've used divs for these boxes. Now. As soon as I write the property of display flex, you'd see that these are now arranged along the main axis, which is this red line. So by default, the flex direction is always row. So you do not need to specify by default if you want it to be horizontal. So this is the reason why we see the main axis running horizontally and the cross axis vertically. Now, if you want these items to stack on top of each other, just like before, so instead of removing this display flex property, which would be kind of silly, what you could do is you could add the direction, flex direction as column, which would change the direction of our main axis to vertical instead of horizontal. And now the items would stack along the main axis and you can see them stacking on top of each other. Flexbox has two important properties to align or position items. And those are justify content and align items. Justify content aligns or position items along the main axis while align items aligns or position items along the cross axis. So as I've said that the property justify content aligns items along the main axis. So if you have flex direction as row, then the alignment of the items would be horizontal. And if you have the flex direction as column, then the alignment of the items using this property would be vertical. Now there are multiple types of values that you can set. So if you want the items to be at the top, so for this example, I'm going to be setting the flex direction to column. So if I add flex start as a value, now you can see the items are at the top of the main axis. I mean, right at the top. And then if you want the items to be at the bottom, then you can have flex end. And if you want them at the center, you can add justify content as center. And there are two more values which you can add to justify content which are space between and space around. As the name says, space between distributes the items evenly along the main axis with the first item at the beginning of the main axis and then the last item at the end. 
and then for the space around this value distributes the item evenly along the main axis with equal space around each of them the property align items aligns the items along the cross axis now again in this example i'm going to be adding flex direction as column so you can play around and have flex direction as row and you can see how the layout changes now just like justify content this align items takes in three common values which are flex start flex end and center so if you want the items to be at the start of the cross axis you can have flex start if you want the items to be at the end you can have flex end and then if you want the items to be at the center you can have the value as center so there are two more values that align items take and those are baseline and stretch and this value aligns the items such that their baselines align the baseline is an imaginary line upon which the text within the boxes rests on. So when aligning items to the baseline, the item with the largest text or content will kind of determine the baseline for the entire row or column. So this is useful when working with text heavy layouts and where you want the text to align nicely. And then we have stretch as the next value or the last so this value stretches the items along the cross axis to fill the entire content now if you have the flex direction as column now the items would kind of stretch itself to cover the entire width of the container whereas if you had it row then the height of the each of the items would stretch to fill the height of the container now when working with stretch you need to keep in mind that if you have a fixed width and height for the box within the container this stretch won't really work so you need to assign min height and min width if you want it to work either flex row or flex call so to understand the next property we're using eight yellow boxes inside of our container div now you would see that right after six you would see the items are overflowing now the reason for that is that the content inside of the container don't really fit so if you want these items to be coming down to the next line inside of the container then you can add the property of flex wrap to wrap so by default it is no wrap meaning that the items won't wrap but as soon as you write wrap then these items would start wrapping and then coming into the next new line now you would see that we have one two three four at the top and then five six seven at the bottom layer now there is another value which is wrap reverse so what it does is it brings the bottom layer to the top and then takes the top layer to the bottom basically reversing the order at which it is wrapped so now you would see five six seven eight and then you would see one two three four now you can also align or position these as well using those justify content and align items property now if you want everything to be at the center you can write justify content center and then you can add align items to center next up we have align self now this property is used to align individual items along the cross axis within a flex container so it overrides the default align items property that you might have set in your container for that specific item now this takes in the values similar to the align items that are flex star and flex end center baseline and stretch now there is another value that is auto so by default this align self is auto meaning that whatever you have written in your align items property this would just follow that now to understand this better we're going to be having one example now here you can see that we have align items as center now let's say we want to target the first box so by using the end child one we're going to be grabbing this first yellow box and then let's use the property align self to flex end and then you'd see that now this box with one as the text would come down and align itself different compared to the other boxes now let's talk about the properties that are related to the individual flex items first up we have flex grow now this property controls how much an item should grow relative to the other items within the same container now this takes 
a unitless value that represents the proportion of available space that the item should take up now for example if you have three items and then each of these you have flex grow and you specify one two and three to each individual one of them respectively so the third item will take up three times as much space as the first item and then we have flex shrink which is kind of opposite to this um, flex grow so this property controls how much an item should shrink relative to the other items within the same container when there isn't enough space so it takes just like the flex grow a unitless value that represents the proportion of the space that it should be taken away from each of the item so for example if you have three boxes and within these boxes we have flex shrink and you specify one two and three to each of them individually and then the third item will shrink three times faster than compared to the first item and then we have flex spaces now this property sets the initial size of an item before any remaining space is distributed so it can take a length or a percentage value so if it is set to auto, the item size will be based on its content. To understand this flex basis, you'd see that I have targeted the first child, that is box with one as its inner content. And then you'd see that I've added flex basis as 100%. Now what it does, it basically takes the entire width of the container that is available for the items and then it sets itself in a new row and then the next items come in the next row with two three four and then if you have more content like i have in this example so six seven eight would come just underneath that the last property that we're going to be talking about is the order property now this order property takes a value that represents the order of the flex item now a lower number means that the item will appear earlier in the display order while a higher number means that it will appear later so let's say you have two items with the same order value so they will appear in the order they are written in the source code the default value for order is zero. So all the items inside of a flexible container has zero as the order. But then if you add negative or a lower value, then they would start to adjust themselves in the order as I've just mentioned that if you have smaller number, then they will come first and then the higher ones would come later. Well, that's it for our Flexbox crash course. We hope you've learned something new and exciting today and that you're ready to flex your design muscles like never before. But before I go, I'd like to say that these videos, well, I need to spend countless hours editing these videos to make them the best that they can be, at least to what I'm capable of. Now, the only way you guys can show your support is by subscribing to the channel and also hitting that bell icon. Now by subscribing, you not only stay up to date with our latest videos, but also your appreciation for all the hard work and effort that goes into making them. So please hit that subscribe button and help us keep bringing you fun and informative videos. Until next time, keep flexing and happy coding.